Yeah, I got myself a new little baby. I just couldn't live without Precious, so the only thing that I could do to really start healing was to get myself another little baby. So this is a little boy. He's 12 weeks old. He's an exotic short hair, and he's my friend. We're going to be best friends. Nothing's going to replace Precious, but he does fill my heart a little bit. He's a lot like her. Anyways, you'll probably see a lot of him. But today, we're going to work on something cool. So let's get into it. Okay, this is a shot that I took at my workshop in West Virginia. And obviously, I wasn't hugely impressed with the background, which is just kind of weeds and a little bit of grass. So I really had to figure out what to do with it. I sat on it for a few weeks because I wasn't sure. So today, I threw it into Photoshop, I decided to play around. And I'm just going to increase the opacity of the final edit slowly so that you can see what I did kind of slowly. And this is what I came up with. People seem to really like it on social media. And uh, I had a few people ask if I could do a tutorial on it. And since I did not actually do a tutorial, while I did this edit, it's kind of hard for me to go back and start from square one and recreate it exactly because I didn't record the steps. I did use one of my floral textures for this and so I thought what we would do is I'd grab another image from my workshop and see if I can't come up with something similar. I'll use the same techniques, but obviously it won't be identical, but let's get into it. Okay. This one could be cool. Um, this model's name is Condrea, and you can see my feet down here, so that's not ideal. So we'll have to figure out what to do with this. So in keeping with the look of the previous image, and I have not pre-done this or played with it prior to this recording, so you're just going to see me fiddle and Obviously, if I don't like this, I will not be posting it. So let's see. Okay, so her skin does look pretty yellow. So let's come down to the color mixer. I'm going to turn the yellow a little bit more orange so that it looks a little bit more natural and not so yellow. That's going to be some of the reflection from the yellow in the green grass. And as far as the green is concerned, I'm going to reduce the saturation because I've never been a fan of lime green. And, you know, like I've said before, in, in green, it's mostly yellow. So I'm going to reduce the yellow as well. So if I do that, you can see that her skin then becomes very cool, almost blue. And I don't mind it because it's maintaining the red in her cheek and I think it looks kind of cool. So I think I'm going to leave that. Go back up into my blacks in the basic menu. I'm just going to lighten those blacks, especially in this part here. And a little bit of the shadows and a little bit of the clarity. Okay, I think that's a relatively good start. I'm going to reduce the highlights a little bit, not too much, because I will bring them back. And I'd say that's probably all I'm going to do to start. Go ahead and open my object, because I do open in 16-bit, which also I open with a smart object. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and flatten, because I'm not going to go back into Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm going to duplicate my layer. I am going to hit Command T for transform, right click, and flip it vertically. Hit Enter, hold down my Alter Option mask, and I'm going to grab a white brush, just a soft white brush, and I'm going to just paint away my feet because I don't want my feet in the shot. And I'm going to add a little bit more of this more interesting foliage like this. I'm not mad that I'm including some of the 
tulle fabric from the other side that's okay come over to this side paint out this foot and I'm just adjusting the size of my brush little bit here because I'm just going to use a curves adjustment to bring back the um, darkness also I don't want I don't want these bright spackly sunspots as part of this image either This is a good technique if you have portions of your image like for this I would like something a little bit more interesting above her head if that makes sense not just but this is going to be her leg so we definitely don't want her leg in this at all. paint that back a little bit so just a hint of tool around her okay that's a good start good enough anyway go ahead and flatten this again and now I'm just gonna do a curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna try and hopefully create a dark enough adjustment so that I can get rid of this sun spackle it's not going to be perfect yet but that's okay And I know everybody likes to consume these videos as quick as possible. Um, what is it, like a five or a 10 minute video is ideal. People don't wanna sit and watch through a 30 minute video. So I may fast forward through some of this if I feel like it's gonna take too much time. If you hear noises, that's my new little boy playing with a mouse. Just add a little bit of darkness around her. And you can see that the colors are kind of off here, but that's okay, we can definitely bring that back. What are you doing? You don't need that. before and after and a new layer overlay blend mode and I'm going to sample this color oh that's what happens when you have a little baby kitty on your keyboard and what did he do we're just gonna turn the color of the fabric back to blue because I'm noticing right now that it's it's definitely off
I'm actually going to change it to the blue blend mode just because that overlay wasn't exactly changing the color the way I wanted it to. So make sure you play with your color blend mode, your overlay blend mode, especially if you're working on colors because sometimes depending on the color and the lighting, just the overlay isn't going to change the color. So the blue definitely worked better with the color blend mode for this. So much better. I'm just going to go a little bit more saturated for this. does look a little bit better. Okay, let's just take a look. That's before and that's after. Definitely better. Okay, go ahead and flatten. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, um, like on the other image that I edited, I actually did zero skin retouching on her at all. I did some dodging and burning and that was it because I wanted to maintain the uh, structure of her freckles, which I love, love. So um, I'm going to try and do the same thing here. I want to keep the edit really similar to the techniques I did in the last one. So I'm just going to do some skin retouching, not softening. I'm just going to use Dodge and Burn Curves Adjustment Layers. And um, I'm going to speed through this so that you don't have to sit and watch it for half an hour. Okay. Okay, guys, I decided to just go ahead and do it and record the effects of what I did. So, so this is where we left off. And then I burned in some shadows. I cleaned up the skin. This is just using a curves adjustment layer and that was simply to get rid of the blotchiness. I've done zero skin softening on this image. Then I added a soft light layer using a really really light almost blue just to make the highlights pop. And this here is just using a multiply layer just to burn in those shadows a little bit more. And then I grabbed a vignette of just sampled a blue color here and created a reverse gradient at I think it was 200. If you open it up, you can see it's 200 percent. It's just a radial with a dither. And then I grabbed one of my floral overlays from my texture set right here. And I just painted it only on the perimeter, making sure to leave some leaves and a bit of the grass just so that it looked like it belonged. Now, I did decide to use a hue saturation adjustment layer to change the colors in the backdrop to blue to match the outfit. And all I did was open up a hue saturation layer right here and I just adjust the master all the way to almost the end to achieve that color. And then I added a levels adjustment and this levels was simply to lighten the blacks just to make her pop out more. And you will have noticed in that previous image I did the same thing. So now we will move on. So um, it's up to you if you want to maintain the layers. You can just add them together and create a group. This is my levels. I better throw that into the group. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. And that's honestly just with five minutes of work. So 
you could either be done or you could be like me and keep on going. So for me, um, I've saved this and I highly recommend that if you have layers like this, you can save it and um, then you can rename the flattened layer to a different name. I usually do point one, and that just really helps with maintaining those layers without working with the layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and flatten this now. Duplicate that layer and I'm going to go to filter uh, Topaz Studio and I'm going to initiate glow. Now I like glow because it adds a lot of brightening and contrast and that glow effect and it really did help with this particular image. Um, I will use Topaz a few times throughout this. So, okay, so now I'm in glow and we're going to go down to contrast and color, which is this one. And you can see that it's added a lot of orange and stuff, but I really do enjoy this effect. The only thing I'm going to change, I'm going to open up my HSL color tuning window. I'm just going to bump up the overall lightness probably right about there and this green color so if you hold your cursor over any of these colors it'll show you where they are in the image so for this one I'm going to grab the greens and I'm just gonna desaturate those greens a bit something like that okay click OK so here we are it's pulled it back into Photoshop and I'm just going to reduce the opacity on this before and after see how it's really bumped up the colors I like it I think it looks really really pretty so right about there maybe bring it down to about 35 or so so I try to find one that has I don't want that much green I can change the color myself but usually something like this works quite well but let's just see if there's something with a little bit more coolness to it mm, see this is good this one actually might be good let's try this okay so all I do is drag it on command T and I don't really want that frame so I'm just gonna pull it up like that and then what I do is if there's any blatant scratch marks or something I'll just use the patch tool to minimize them because a lot of times especially where it's around her face and that you don't want any weird any weird textures even though yes I will paint it mostly off of her but I think that should be good and now all I'm gonna do is reduce the normal blend mode down till I find a place something around 30 ish like that and now hold down my option mask key and grab a white brush I'm at about 23% flow and you can just paint a little bit of that texture around All that this does is it kind of blends everything together and it also helps her pop out a little bit more. There's a little bit too much shadow right here around her head so I'm going to make sure that I get some of that and even a little bit in here because it's a little dark. This just adds like a dreamy quality. So it's really just playing with textures and overlays. Okay, so that's pretty. So 
So before and after, and you can reduce it to suit. And feather that out. So I still am not super happy with the top of her head right here. So I'm probably going to just use a blank layer and grab my clone tool and kind of fill that in. I feel like it's a little distracting and not as cohesive as the rest of, of the background. Now it would be nice to have a leaf or something over here, even something like that. So what do we do? Well, new blank layer, go to our brush. Let's find a foliage brush that might actually look similar. Okay, um, let's try this one. This is like a foliage buildup kind of, kind of one. So if I sample this color, let's see what we get. And don't worry if, if this brush is like a little bit too much. I've got it at 100%. I'm just going to change this one to something like that because it's not it's not working the way I want it to. I'm actually going to reduce my flow. I do want this a bit bigger. And then you could come in and just maybe add a little bit more around just to help blend it in a bit. I need to make this brush bigger for up here and sample a different color. So by doing this, you can kind of help Photoshop make it look a little bit more blended and this is just a basic leaf brush okay so that looks pretty good I think so that's before and that's after a couple things you can do change the blend mode to multiply and duplicate that layer again turn that layer off but on your multiply blend mode just reduce that flow down something like that and then turn on this one up here and make it normal again. And now if I reduce the opacity on this one, it's gonna blend in a little bit because we have that multiply blend mode beneath it. And I'm just going to increase that again a bit. So right about there. That's good. I'm happy with that. I might just add a little bit more to this piece up here little bit there there that looks a bit better okay okay I like that that works I'm gonna go ahead and flatten and save so if we go back to the other image you can see here how I applied the same kind of textures and lightning all around and I really really made her pop so now we want to really make her pop so what we're gonna do is duplicate our layer go to our Adobe Camera Raw filter and we're going to really focus on that clarity. So over here in clarity, we're only looking at her. We're going to really increase that and the texture as well. Something like this. And you can see that that texture really now pops out all of the details of the foliage and it really starts to blend well. I like it. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. So now you have a couple of options here. 
You can add a mask to it and a basic white brush. Okay, so we're just minimizing the detail in the background so that she really pops out more than the background. Kind of like depth of field, right guys? before and after. So that's really emphasized her. Feather the mask out. That's good. Go ahead and flatten and add a blank layer. And then all I did, like you can see here, that there's all kinds of different colors, purples and roses. I just sampled colors throughout the image. Now granted, there's not a lot of different colors, but she does have some oranges, warms and gold. So I just sample it and then choose maybe one that's a little bit more saturated and lighter. And then if we come up and we just add little bits and pieces of that light around, and now we need to sample another color. So she, it looks like her lips are red. So we're going to add a little bit of red as well, but on a different separate layer so that you can adjust. So if you add a little bit of red now, it just kind of starts to look a little bit more interesting without completely changing the image. I think the, the tip is here is, is don't limit yourself. Think outside the box, you know, and things typically tend to end up looking very cool if you continuously explore and play and don't just settle for the same all the time. I think I think a lot of times photographers will get in a creative rut because they don't experiment and try other things. And that's where creativity dies, right? Like you constantly want to explore, try different looks. I know I do. I'm going to grab a little bit of a purple on a new layer because sometimes adding in one more unrelated color can really add some interest. Okay, so here we go with all of our unique colors. I'm just going to pull them down. Right? So I love this. I think this is going to really end up looking cool. So I'm going to flatten and save. Duplicate my layer. I'm going to go into exposure. Okay, so it defaulted to the previous filter that I used on that other image. So that works fine, except the colors in this image, in particular her skin and that, it's not, it's no bueno. No bueno, which is down here in the color, right? The split toning. So I do think we want something a little bit more cool and we'll reduce it to about here. I just want to make sure that we have some grain, a little rougher, nine-ish. Okay, click up. And what we're going to do is add a mask. Make sure you have a black brush and I'm going to paint that off of her. And this is really going to help her pop out of this as well. but I'm not gonna take it off of everywhere. I really just want her to stand out in this image, but I love all of the effects. So I'm gonna feather my mask and reduce this a little bit. Right about there is perfect. So that's before, that's after. Go ahead and flatten.
duplicate your layer. We're going to come back into exposure. And once we're in exposure this time, I'm going to reset this layer. And then I'm going to find another filter that might work. Usually it's one of these. And I do. So this one tends to have a little bit too much contrast. Mm, but I do like it. Okay, now I'll adjust. So definitely reduce the grain. Adjust the curves. Add some clarity back to her. And And click apply. Now we're going to reduce this all the way down. Right about there. Flatten. Duplicate. I'm going to go into liquify. And I'm just going to poof up her hair here a little bit because I feel like it's it's not as good as it can be. Click OK. Flatten. We're just going to start adjusting the brightness of this image in specific places. Invert that. And I'm going to paint that back on her face. We just really need her face be bright. Everything else is pretty good. And now we're going to go into our selective color, start with our blacks. Now if we add some magenta into the blacks, yes, I think that's great, but we're going to increase the shadows a little bit. Go to our neutrals, I'm going to add some cyan and a little bit of blue. Go to our whites, and I think I want my whites to be yellow. Adding magenta to the whites, pull that up a little bit. And that's your color toning. Let's do a quick curves adjustment and we should be done. Paint it off of her. Again, so she pops out.
And there we have it. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Until the next video.